Uh, baby, welcome to another edition of Pound for Pound Picks right here on the Covers YouTube channel. This week's edition, we're going to be breaking down the UFC Fight Night RDA versus Luke A. Card. We also have a couple of news items to discuss at the back end of the show. And here to help me do it all, the pride of Halifax, Nova Scotia, my guy, Ro. Okay, Ro, no more wasting time. Let's get right into the action here. Let's start like we always do with the picks in the main event, and we got a pretty good one. The odds indicate that, at least. RDA coming in as a minus 118 favorite. Vincente Luque coming back at minus 102. So you go back and forth. You look at everything here. Kind of a difficult fight to judge here. But I'm going to go with RDA for the simple reason that I think his path to victory is much more clear. And that path to victory will be taking Luque to the ground and holding him there for a little bit. He is a much more well-rounded fighter. And you look at his victories here lately, and that's what he's been able to do. Uh, complete domination versus Brian Barberina, Moicano, Paul Felder. The fights where he came up short were against opponents where who had pretty good wrestling defense, right? And I wouldn't pit Luque in that company. Luque is just two fights removed from a fight versus Bilal Muhammad, who had the type of success against him that I expect RDA to have. And for the most part, Luque hasn't needed to defend or depend on his wrestling defense because he's been paired up with uh, other strikers for the most part. So I think he's going to be in some trouble here. And you look at the fight situation for Luque. I know you're going to talk about this as well, but some red flags coming off two straight losses. Yeah. It's been a year since his last fight. It's his longest layoff in a while. And as for RDA, like you look at his last nine fights, he's got a losing record. He's four and five, but you got to consider the strength of schedule here. With the exception of the Michael Chiesa fight, he only loses the top tier talent: Fazeev, Leon Edwards, Usman, Colby Covington. So for all those reasons, I like him, and I like the number here. I think it's a fair price at minus one eighteen. So what do you think for the main event? Are we on the same page here? Yeah, we are. And I mean, I will say that, uh, you know, I, I am a little bit uh, concerned about uh, Dos Anjos' ability to, uh, you know, out-grapple uh, Luque, given that in the past he has struggled against some of those bigger, stronger guys at welterweight. Uh, obviously, he out-wrestled uh, Barbarina in his last fight, but Barbarina looked really soft and out of shape, and he's kind of looked that way his last few losses. Um, and, you know, Luque is bigger, stronger, younger than RDA. And like I said, we have seen RDA kind of... Uh, uh, suffer against fighters like that that have those physical attributes in the past but uh, like you mentioned that brain hemorrhage really scares me when it comes to betting on Luke in this spot uh, you know we suffered from a brain bleed in that brutal knockout loss to uh, Jeff Neal uh, almost exactly a year ago uh, sure he's been cleared by multiple doctors but injuries like that can have long-term ramifications even if it's psychological you know he could find himself shifting him away from that aggressive style that really brought him success in the past and uh, you look at Luke, and he's typically displayed poor striking defense. He's always been willing to take a hit in order to give one. But coming off that brain injury, that's uh, more than a little worrisome, uh, especially against a southpaw like Dos Anjos. Uh, if you look at his history against southpaws, and he's uh, really struggled in the striking department. Uh, Jeff Neal, uh, wonder boy who, you know, can fight out of both stances, but used a lot of southpaw stance in his fight. Leon Edwards, uh, they all picked him apart out of that southpaw stance. Even in his knockout win against uh, Barbarina back in 2019, uh, he uh, he absorbed 169 significant strikes in that uh, win. So, I mean, he's a guy that uh, we've seen him kind of struggle against, uh, you know, fighting out of, out of that open stance in the past. Doesn't always have the greatest fight IQ. And uh, Del Sanchez is a very experienced veteran, uh, tons of experience in these five-round main events. And he does have the wrestling advantage as well. So uh, I simply can't uh, back uh, Luke uh, at the, you know, close to a pick and price here. Uh, you know, if I was going to lean towards Luke, maybe inside the distance because he has such a high finish rate, you can get him at inside the distance of about plus 165. But uh, no, I'm with you. I'm going to ride with RDA here and uh, get him on the money line. Yeah, not too long ago, it looked like Luke might have been in the title pitcher. Maybe one more impressive went away from a title shot, but not the case anymore. Maybe going in the wrong direction. Okay, let's drop down to the co-main event. A very familiar name here. Cub Swanson, a plus 186 underdog. He's taking on Hakeem Dewadu, who's coming back at minus 225. So for me, this fight, it's kind of like the Derek Lewis fight that I hit on a couple of weeks ago. It's not a bet on the fighter necessarily. It's a bet on the number. So I'm going to take Cub Swanson here at plus 186 because I think that this fight is much closer 
than these odds indicate. So Swanson, one of the top featherweights in the history of the sport, there's no doubt about it. And absolutely, he's been doing a lot more losing than winning lately. But it's one of these things you got to consider the strength of schedule. He's not exactly getting smacked around by total scrubs in there. So his strength of schedule has been much more difficult than that of his opponent in Dewadu. And let's not pretend like he's been extremely impressive lately either. One and two in his last three fights. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of experience versus veterans like Swanson. I think you could argue that he's fighting up and Swanson's fighting down a little bit. Maybe should he be favored? Do I do in this one? Probably, but minus 225. I don't think so. I think Swanson worth a shot as a dog. Bro, what do you think? Am I biting off more than I can chew with that one? No, I mean, you nailed that uh, Derek Lewis pick, and I think uh, there's a really good chance that Swanson does pull off the upset here. I mean, yeah, the guy's 39, but he does a really good job of still pushing the pace. He can still win inside the distance. And, uh, you know, Dewadu is, uh, you know, another guy. We faded a couple of Canadians last week, and, uh, you know, he's another guy that, uh, you know, he might be Canadian, love watching this guy fight, but he's never really impressed me. He's never really taken that next step and really evolved his game. And, uh, yeah, I have a hard time uh, – uh, backing him at, uh, you know, such a large favorite in the fight, which should probably, you know, I would say he should probably be maybe in that minus 150 range, but uh, anything over than minus 200 is uh, way too much. So uh, definitely some value on uh, Swanson there. Okay, let's keep rolling. The lone heavyweight fight on the card here on Saturday night sees Martin Boudet take on Josh Parisian. I'm going to take this one to be finished inside the distance at minus 120. I think we got a great pairing for a finish here. You take a look at these guys. Their fights have combined to see a finish rate of 67% in their MMA careers. Uh, 18 KO wins between them. Each of these guys likes to throw a lot of strikes. Parisian lands around 4.5 significant strikes per minute. Boudet around 5.2. But here's the thing. They each like to throw a lot, but they each get hit a lot. Each of these guys has a negative striking differential inside the ufc also not much of a threat of the takedown in this one so don't expect a whole lot of clock to be chewed up with uh, wrestling and grappling exchanges in this one so i like this one to be finished inside the distance minus 120 Ro, your final pick for saturday night's card what are you looking at you know i'm uh, i'm liking a pretty big underdog play here i like uh I like uh, Pollyanna Viana to win inside the distance. Uh, you can get that at plus 275 Ooh, at uh, okay. bet 365. Uh, this is another one where I just like the number. I do understand why uh, Yasmin uh, Lucindo is the favorite here, but I think, uh, you know, it's a pretty big line considering how um, untested Lucindo is. I mean, she's a very good prospect, but she's also 21, largely untested against top competition. Uh, you know, she lost in her UFC debut to uh, Yasmin uh, Horegi, and I mean, Horegi is also a very good prospect in her own right. Uh, and then she beat Brogan Walker uh, by unanimous decision her last time out in April. But I don't really rate Walker. And uh, while Lucindo had four takedowns in that fight, she didn't do a whole lot with them. Uh, now she's taking on a fighter in uh, Pollyanna Vienna, who can be a bit up and down, uh, but she's three and one in her last four. And she's a finisher, which is pretty rare to see in the lighter divisions, especially in the women's side. Uh, her last nine wins have all come by finish inside of the first round. Uh, you know, that's some uh, Francis and Ganu stuff there. Uh, you know, that includes all four wins in the UFC, as well as a first round knockout of Amanda Hebus uh, for the Jungle Fight strawweight title uh, way back in 2015. Uh, Vienna is a very good striker up the middle, uh, which we saw against Hebus and in her last fight against uh, Jin Yu Frey. Her biggest weakness, of course, is her defensive wrestling. And while Lucindo is very good with takeouts, taking this fight to the mat can also put her in some tough grappling positions. And Vienna is a very good grappler, capable of winning my sub as well, which we've seen many times. Uh, so, you know, I do really do like the upside of uh, Vienna being able to pull this off and uh, win early in this one. And uh, getting that number at plus 275, I think, is terrific value. Okay, there you have it. Five total picks for the event on Saturday night. It looks like a, a pretty fun card. Okay, Ro, let's get into some news items. It's finally official. UFC 293 uh, finally has a main event. This one going down in September. Kind of, I guess, a short notice fight for each of these guys, but it is agreed to. Israel Adesanya will de be defending his middleweight title versus Sean Strickland. No big surprise here. Adesanya, a pretty big favorite here make sure you're shopping around as always he's minus 400 at bet 365 minus 455 over at draft 
Kings. Uh, he was a bigger favorite versus Jared Cannonier, just as a bit of a reference point, but this one still has more time to move. So my question for you, we, we take a look at, at Sean Strickland here. Uh, is he worth even a sprinkle as an underdog in the plus 350 range? You know, I really don't think so. I mean, this is a guy that, uh, you know, everyone had him to lose to a pretty much a completely untested guy until his last fight. Uh, you know, obviously he picked up the knockout win there. He was definitely underrated going into that fight. Uh, but I mean, we're talking about Adesanya here. Uh, we're talking about a guy in Strickland doesn't really have much finishing ability, uh, needs to close that gap. And, you know, it's just a matter of Adesanya kind of running through everyone in that division, beating guys like Whitaker, uh, Vittori, uh, you know, uh, tw um, twice. And it kind of leads to this point where he's just kind of going to kind of have to fight these other guys that are kind of, you know, in that top five range. But, uh, you know, I think we've seen Strickland kind of reach his limit, and I don't think he's anywhere near as good as Adesanya is. He's not a guy that, uh, you know, he's, his pressure's good. He hopefully will be able to put on a show. But I think we're going to just going to see with, um, we're going to see Adesanya kind of stick and move here. And I don't think, uh, you know, I don't think he has much chance of that win. Yeah, Strickland gets hit way too much. Yeah. So I think a very, very popular uh, pick or popular prop for this one, Adesanya by knockout. Mm -hmm. It's going to be yeah. probably minus 200 on that one, but not a whole lot we can do with this one. But hey, an opportunity for Israel Adesanya to uh, keep cleaning out the division. I guess you could say. So more news out of the weekend. Of course, the main event. So uh, Sanhagen, take uh, Rob Font. Despite that, a lot of people, well, some people complained about it. Yeah. They thought it was boring. I was happy, bro, that it was boring because I had Sanhagen <laughs> yeah, yeah. winning by decision. So we hit that one up plus 170. Boring, but a dominant victory, right? Almost 20 minutes of control in that one. So three straight dominant victories for Sanhagen now. So... What do we think? Does he get the next title shot at 135? Uh, there's still a few things that have to work themselves out. But uh, Henry Cejudo is running his mouth. He's hoping to run in and steal that title shot. He's calling for a fight possibly versus Marab next. And we still have to see who wins between O'Malley and Sterling. But if you're calling the shots, are you giving the shot to Sanhagen next? You know, I really don't think so, especially if Sterling manages to hold on to the belt uh, because we saw Sterling just dominate Sanhagen a few years ago. And, uh, you know, Dana White was certainly wasn't impressed with uh, that fight on the weekend, and I don't think most fans were either. And you need to see guys that bring a lot of action. And Sanhagen has been that guy in the past, but I think that uh, boring display is definitely something that uh, won't earn him too many fans when it comes to uh, getting another title shot. Um, it would be, you know, kind of an interesting matchup to see him go against M O'Malley if O'Malley ends up taking the belt. Uh, but I also think O'Malley hasn't fought a lot of other guys in the division as well who could also make a move up. Uh, you know, I, I think this is going to be a really interesting division uh, moving forward because it really is going to come down to what Sterling uh, does in the future. If he sticks around the division, is he ever going to fight Marab? I mean, uh, because they train together, they're friends, they're pretty much refusing to fight each other, which is kind of creating this weird uh, kind of stalemate in the division. But, uh, you know, I think Marab in a lot of ways, might be the guy that's uh, best equipped to deal with uh, Sterling. So, you know, it's a very tough division to figure out who's next in line. It really does come down to the fight next weekend. Uh, but uh, as of right now, I definitely wasn't impressed with that win by Sandhagen, and I wouldn't uh, wouldn't like him to uh, get a fight, another fight against, Omal uh, against Sterling. Yeah, I think Cejudo is probably going to steal it, especially if he can go get a win versus yeah. Marab. I think that would be an excellent situation for the UFC to kind of uh, put Marab back in line yeah. for a title shot, especially if Sterling's going to stick around and especially if he can defeat O'Malley there next weekend. You know, it was a close fight between him and Sterling, a split decision. I had it for Sterling. Some people made a case for Cejudo. I wasn't one of them. But yeah, they could run that back. I think it would be fun. So uh, uh, we'll leave it at this. I'll ask you about the uh, the Nate Diaz Jake Paul yeah. fight. Uh, we each hit on that. Uh, you had the over seven and a half, I had it going all the way to decision. Did you watch the fights? Were you entertained? Were you impressed by either fighter at all? You know, honestly, not really. I watched the highlights, uh, kind of uh, kept up on it afterwards. I was, you know, camping this weekend actually, so I missed most of the fights and ended up uh, recapping them uh, when I got back into town. But, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, the sort of thing where, you know, Jake Paul is going to keep winning these fights if he keeps handpicking his opponents. But if he takes on anyone with a boxing background who's anywhere near him in size, uh, you know, I don't think he gets the win. But, uh, you know, this is, you know, it's a weird world now. We're seeing a lot of gimmick uh, boxing uh, fights and, 
you know, one one thing that really pricked my ears up on the weekend was uh, hearing Stipe say that he would love to fight uh, Nganu in a trilogy fight in the in the uh, boxing ring. And I think that would be actually uh, a kind of an interesting fight, to be perfectly honest, because those are two guys, good hands, uh, you know, history against each other. And at least they'd kind of be on the same level in terms of boxing ability. So, you know what, you know, if, if there's any gimmick boxing fight to be made, Stipe versus Nganu, I think, would uh, make me pretty happy. Yeah, I, I hate on the whole Jake Paul boxing experience that I did on last week's show. You know that it's basically a level above celebrity boxing, essentially. You know, these guys are athletes in there. But I got to give credit here. <laughs> the fights that he's in are usually pretty entertaining. I know he's handpicking guys who are past their prime. but it, And a lot of that is because of the name, the Anderson Silva, the Tyron Woodley, uh, the Nate Diaz. They're a draw. If he fights the 25th ranked 185 pound boxer in the world it's a guy that nobody's ever heard of but guys like me and you who are big combat sports fans we want to see that fight between jake paul and the 25th ranked 185 pound fighter because uh jake paul will probably get knocked out inside of five rounds so i don't think we're gonna see that uh i kind of just wish jake paul would admit what it is too like a level above celebrity boxing yet he's out here calling out canelo after the yeah. fight, for God's sake. So, I don't know, man. Uh, I get offended by it too much for some reason. People tell me, they're like, Joe, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Don't pay attention to it. It's shoved in my face everywhere I go. I can't not pay attention to it. But like I said, a little bit of a hater, but uh, I got to give the guys credit. It was entertaining. And we do thank uh, Nate Diaz for hanging on and cashing that one uh, plus 180 for the fight to go to decision okay that does it for this edition of pound for pound picks we're going to be back i'm not going to be back next week ro will be back next week i'm on vacation but he's going to be previewing the ufc 292 i'm losing track of the number so of many pay-per-view pay events here. right we got in what three pay-per-view events in what six weeks it's uh been pretty good yeah so i'm losing track of all the numbers but ro's going to be back here giving you all his best bets for that event so make sure you check back and check that out guys if you like this show it's very easy to let us know that you like it just hit the like button right down there and while you're at it make sure you are subscribed to the covers a youtube channel covering everything that there is to cover in the world of sports betting thank you very much for watching today's show we'll see you next time